Hello and welcome. Continuing with our look at subroutines, today we're going to be looking at functions and also modules in Python. So what is a function? A function is like a procedure, except that it returns a value to the code that called it. So let's have a look at this code here. So it looks very similar to a function, because then we're starting with def, we give it a name, we list any parameters that we want to send into this subroutine. We do a little bit of calculating, and then we've got the new line at the bottom, return new number. So it takes whatever the value is and sends it back to the calling code. So let's have a look at our main program here, just kind of separate these two out. So the main code, where the computer starts, x equals int input enter number. That's fair enough, somebody enters a number, which is an integer. And then for variable y, the value that we want to store in this is going to be the result of calling the function calculate. So we call calculate, we send it the value of x that we just input earlier. So again, that goes here, that will call this program. Whatever the value of x is will become the value of number now. New number equals new number divided by 100. Pretty simple. And then the result of new number, as you can see here, becomes y. So it's just like a procedure, except that it returns a value back to the calling program. And this is very useful, and it's a good way of passing values around between complicated sets of code in a program. Very easy to make mistakes, though, with functions. So common mistake one, forgetting to add a return to your function. So it's the same code as before. I've done the calculation here, but I've just forgot to say return new number. So that's going to cause a problem when it comes to this line because it'll try and calculate x. And what's it sending back? Well, it's sending back nothing to y. So when I do print y here, it's not going to be doing what I expect. So if it's a function, do not forget to return your value. The other mistake is not setting up a variable to store the value being returned. So my subroutine here is fine. I've got my return new number here. But when I send this back, oh, I'm not keeping it. It just disappears into the ether. So when I say print y, well, there is no y to print. So if you're returning a value, it's like throwing a ball to somebody. There's got to be somebody there to catch it. You have to have a variable set up to store the value when it goes back to your main program. Let's have a look at a bit more advanced function use. Have a look at this. We've got functions calling functions. Again, let's just start with the main program. So output equals add. OK, so we go up and we go to the add subroutine. So number one equals get input. Oh, what's get input? Get input is another subroutine. So when I call this, it calls another subroutine. So number one equals int input, please enter number. And then it returns num1, which becomes number one in the other function. And it's the same with number two. Let's get call this function which returns a value, which now becomes number two. Now we can do the calculation and return the answer, which becomes output, which we can then print. So all we're doing is calling a function from within a function. And we can do that. We can call functions from inside procedures from within functions. It's all about modular development of the code. Take each distinct piece of functionality create it as a subroutine, give it a name, call it when required. So even though my program has quite a lot of lines of code, my main program only has two lines. It calls add, which then calls the get input function as required. It's more compact, it's more clear, but it's a little bit more work to design. Another bit of advanced function use, we can have more than one return statement in our code. So if we have a look at this function here, it's a simple 
piece of subroutine code that takes a number, squares it, and returns it. But if there's a situation where somebody's trying to square the number 1, we don't even have to do a calculation because we can just return the value 1 because we know that 1 squared is 1. So let's not waste the computing time. So if somebody has typed in that the value that they want to square is 1, just return 1. Otherwise, perform the actual function to the power of 2 and then return it. Simple example, but you can return different values for different reasons. So, for example, you might want to return true in some cases, false in others. You can build that into your code in Python by using multiple returns. And just to finish off, let's have a look at modules in Python. So a module in Python is a procedure that has already been built and is ready for you to use. Sometimes we call them libraries in other languages. In Python, we call them modules. It's just extra procedures and functions that have been pre-written and that you can load into your program and use it yourself. And we use them all the time. In order to load this extra module into your code, we use the import command at the top. So here's a very simple short code. We start with import math. So there is a whole library of mathematical functions that we want to include. So when we say import math, Python knows to include all this code with our code. So when I'm running the program, I can say math dot square root SQRT, and that will call the square root function of math and perform a square root for me. I don't have to work it out myself. I can use all this existing code that's already been created as long as I import it into my code. It's also possible to write all your own modules. If you create a code or lots of subroutines that you think might be useful in the future, you can put them in a file and then import them into programs in the future and call them as required, just like we've done in this example. But that's a bit more complicated. Maybe it's something we'll look at in a future lesson. Common mistake with modules, forgetting the import statement. So I'm saying here math dot square root, but the computer's saying, what is math? I don't understand. So then you get this sort of error here. So if this happens, make sure you say import and then the name of the code you're trying to import. And let's finish with just a little activity just to give us a bit of practice with modules. Write a program to display a blast off countdown timer. You know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off. But this time we're going to import the time module and we're going to use time.sleep to pause for one second. So then instead of just displaying it all at once, we get 10, 9, 8, so on and so forth. So our for loop needs to go from 10 to 0 in steps of minus 1 with that one second pause between each loop. Go program it. Done it? Good. Perfect. Let's have a look at a solution. So we start by importing the time code. For x in range 10 to 0 in steps of minus 1, print x. Call time.sleep1. And that'll give us a nice pause between each number of the countdown. And at the end, we'll print blast off. OK, hopefully that was helpful to you in your studies. I will see you in the next video. Good luck.